was tonight from uh, Jody's uh, teaching. It was really encouraging yes. about reigning, ruling and reigning yeah. in Christ. And it struck me when she read from John chapter 12, verse 49. For I have not spoken of myself. This is Jesus talking. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me. He gave me a commandment, which what I should say and what I should speak. And the thing that stuck out to me is he distinguished between what I should say and what I should speak. Yes. And I think, I don't know, I've prayed about this a lot, but I think that what he's saying is what I say to myself, what I talk to myself, is different than what I speak. Yes. We speak to the mountains. Yes. We declare yes. healing and health mm -hmm. outside of ourselves. But we have also got to be mindful of what we say to ourselves. Right. Our self-talk has yes. got to be ascended. It's got yes. to be heaven-focused. And his self-talk was what his father said to him. You are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Yes. That was his self-talk. That's what he would say to himself. Yes. And I want all of us to remember that if we... Jesus has sent us. And we are to be a reflection of Jesus Christ, just as he was a reflection of his father, yeah. right? We're all one. Jesus and his father were one. We and Jesus are one. Yeah. We're all one together. And if we will talk to ourselves the way that Jesus talks to us, yes. and if it's his voice that becomes our own voice, yes. then we can speak to the mountains yes. and be, see them be removed. But when we have faith for someone else, but can't recognize ourselves in the reflection, we can't recognize Jesus Christ in ourselves and the reflection when we look in the mirror. Right. When we don't see our heaven face and all we see is our earth face. It was a powerful message from Nathan that he shared. I hope you all got that tape if you weren't here. We have to understand who we are. and We have to talk to ourselves and encourage ourselves with the word so that the word is so much a part of us that when we speak, the word just flows and we give of ourselves. But the word is part of us and one with us. So I just encourage you when you find yourself talking and saying things to yourself that aren't truth, that aren't encouraging, when the fear and the doubts come and when we question things, stop. Take authority. Cast those vain imaginations down because we all have those moments. No matter where we are, we all have those moments. Was that the right thing to do? Is this the right thing? Just know that you are the righteousness of God in Christ. Yes. If there's one thing that you need to repeat to yourself, I am the righteousness yes. of God in Jesus Christ. Yes. I am the righteousness of God in Jesus. I, my father is well pleased in me. Yes. My father is, I am a beloved son. I am called. Yes. I am hand selected. Yes. That's our self-talk. Right. And when we understand that, then we can really make a difference and we can rule and reign yes. in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Yes, we had another powerful night uh, from Eastern Gate House Prayer. I don't know if you have any testimonies or anything they want to share about Friday night, but it was another amazing time. Peter, yeah. Yeah, uh, well, this isn't just about Friday. It's, it's you know, so um, first of all, just very thankful for this church and this family. Um, Wednesday was something changed in the spirit, obviously, when when President Trump announced that he's recognizing Jerusalem as Israel's capital. Yes, amen. In, in our own lives, I'm, I try to be very careful with finances, and, and Wednesday was the first time that I can remember that we literally ran out of money. We paid the bill on Wednesday, and we had no money left to pay our bills that were due Saturday and Sunday. And so, didn't know what was going to happen. I came to church. The church's family prayed for us. Thursday, then, we, we've been trying for months, almost a year, to sell anything on the day that we had and haven't sold anything. In fact, most of the time, people will message Jamie and say, okay, well, we want it, but we want it for this price, and we want you to ship it for free. And it basically, it would cost us money to basically give them the item. And so for the first time Thursday, we actually sold something on the day. So that brought in $50. Well, it still wasn't enough to cover the bills that were due. But then we have an awesome friend that just led, felt led to give us some money, and that ended up covering our bills. But something else, so that, that covered our bills that were due yesterday and, and today. So, but I still felt in my spirit that I'm supposed to give. My mom is retired, she lives on a fixed income of less than 10000 a year. And her firm <coughs> started last year, and she's made, you know, I didn't have, she asked me then for money to get a new furnace or at least help out. And I told her, I said, I, I don't have the money. 
I, I, I literally did not have it then, and obviously don't have it now. But I, I felt led that the Lord wanted me to make a payment on her monthly payment to, for her furnace. But I obviously didn't have the money. I, God had supplied the first couple of needs, but not that one. So I felt led yesterday to contact this place where I've been selling some of my stuff on consignment. Turns out I ended up having $206 of stuff there, so I can make probably two payments on her furnace. Amen. So anyway, praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. He's our yes. service provider. Yes. Awesome. So awesome. Seven streams, right? Uh, We're supposed to have seven streams yeah. of income at any time. It, yeah. So the Lord can provide. But yeah. my release started on Wednesday night when the church prayed for me. Yes. That's mm -hmm. when, uh, when everything changed. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Jesus. Praise Amen. the Lord. Anyone else? Testimonies or prayer requests this morning? Anything anybody wants to share? Sheila? I'll give one testimony that I gave the other night uh, on, on uh, Friday night. But yeah. Thankful that we had an opportunity to get away, and we did that blessing from my brother who sent me a little bit of something and says, do not use this on the grandkids, do not use this on, <laughs> don't get too well, right? Uh, or on any bills, this is for you to go get out of town and get out of here. <laughs> so we had a really good time, we popped into the house of prayer for about an hour and uh, got blessed and, you know, just uh, enjoyed that time of fellowship and, and this time together. Um, you ladies remember I did, and the next contestant is on the Price is Right on the women's seminar because I'd gotten that from somebody's house. Well, I was at the house again, and the Price was Right was on. <laughs> so I shared with the lady uh, that I had used that show uh, as a, uh, as a, going into my, my uh, speech at our, our church that we were doing. So I heard her on the phone, and... Um, she hadn't told me this, but she, she was talking to somebody. They have a 16-year-old grandson who, uh, a couple years ago, was involved in a car accident. They had him both paralyzed and then they would speak. And his lungs have failed to function. And I heard her saying to this person, they've given him one to three months to live, but we're not ready to let go yet. And it wasn't about 10 minutes later I started praying under my breath, not really knowing the circumstance or knowing who she was talking about. I figured it's somebody older. And then I heard her say, well, it's a miracle. Well, that's what we was expecting. We've had prayers all over the world going on. So um, when she got off the phone, she informed me that was her 16-year-old grandson that he had experienced a miracle and his lungs were healed. <laughs> she said it so nonchalantly, I told the lady that I think I was more like pumped up than she was. <laughs> She just said it like, well, that's what, and that's what she said, but well, that's what we expected, you know? And so, yeah. I mean, they did tell us all the time, we're supernatural, yeah. and I felt like she was really living that out yeah. more than me. <laughs> just saying, well, that's what we expected. We've been praying prayers all over the world, so thank yes. God for his healing power. And yes. I told her, thank you for this testimony. I'm going to share. Yes. <laughs> Praise, Praise, the Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, yes. Any other prayer needs or any testimonies this morning? Anybody? Yeah, Roberta. Prayer for the church. She's not feeling well, so she's going to be here tonight. And uh, pray for Tim's wife, Leah. She had a surgery this past week and is having some pain and discomfort from um, after the surgery. So let's pray for Leah. Yeah. She'll be completely healed in Jesus' name. Anything else this morning, anyone? All right, well, let's stand and let's pray. Thank you. Jesus, we're so thankful, Lord, for the testimonies of your grace, Lord, the testimonies of your goodness, the testimonies of your provision, Lord, that you are faithful, Lord, that you never leave us, you never forsake us, Lord. You always come through, Lord. Help us to encourage ourselves with our self-talk, what we say to ourselves, Lord, to rule and reign in this earth, Lord. To speak healing, Lord, to Leah's body, Lord. To speak healing to Evelyn, Lord. Continue to pour out your blessings, pour out your spirit, Lord, as we gather together, Lord. Jesus, in this season, Lord, in this season, Lord, that we gather together in the name of Jesus to lift you up, to glorify your name, the one name above all names. And Lord of Lords, that you are worthy. Oh, come, let us adore you. Oh, come, let us gather together.
together and worship the one true God. Jesus, come meet with us this morning, Lord. Let the winds of your spirit blow and let the rain of your presence fall upon us, Lord. As we worship, Lord, as we draw close to you, Lord. Jesus. That you are hope, Lord. That you are light in the darkness, Lord. That you are an anchor in the storms, Lord. That you'd never leave us, you'd never forsake us, Lord. Jesus, that the joy of the Lord is our strength to endure whatever this world can throw, Lord. Jesus, that we are not of this world, Lord. Help us to rule and reign in this life. One with you, Lord. For the glory of your kingdom. The glory of your kingdom. Bless everybody here today, Lord, with your presence. Bless us with your presence, Lord. As we worship, as we receive the word, the seed, let it fall on good ground today. Jesus, continue the work that you have begun. I thank you, Lord, that you have called every one of us by name, Lord. That you have called us blessed. That you have called us righteous. That you have called us one with you. We thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Just a reminder that if you brought a cell phone with you today to go ahead and silence it. And um, I'm going to make just one announcement. I don't know if anybody has any desire to gather for a New Year's Eve party. But if that sounds fun to you, I know we did it a while ago, have a game night. It's a, on a Sunday night. Um, so let me know if anybody's interested in doing something or thinking about doing something. Right, Michael? <laughs> yes? Is that a yes? Can I, is that a name in? Okay. I'm all. Are we supposed to raise our hands? No, I'm just saying, just let me know. Just let me know if we want to gather. If there's too many for our house, then we'll ask the pastor if we can use the church. And Anyway, so yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then in January, Sunday in Manhattan, the musical, about Philly Sunday. Uh, what would we figure like the third or fourth uh, Friday night of, uh, of January? Um, we'll come, we'll probably be downstairs since we'll have popcorn and all that kind of stuff. And even if the youth want to come and stuff, we'll set up the black, the back TV and stuff so they can have their own area so they can hang out and watch the same thing in their own turf. So as the Lord leads. Yeah, Lily, praise the Lord. Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we can see if we can find a date. Yeah, we can try. We uh, we had some crafts planned for the women's conference, and we were having so much fun with ministry, we didn't have time for crafts. <laughs> so uh, we have crafts and stuff downstairs. We might uh, we might try and throw something. Yeah, a lot of talk about a date that works for the majority, and we'll just see if we all can come. So, all right, let's take an offering. Uh, Toby and Ron, Toby and Ron, can you come take an offering for us this morning? Lord, we're thankful, God, to be here today. Spring you praise and honor and glory for the word of God. Each and every day, God, we seek you and your goodness, Lord. Yes, Lord. We stand in your word yes. that is faithful and true. The word spoken so many years ago still echoes through time, God. They are still for us as the day you spoke it. We trust them and we believe them each and every day, God, that we live by. Now, Lord, we just ask that you will be here in the remainder of this service, God. Anoint our ears to hear your word, God, but it pierce our heart and our mind. Bless this offering, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 The worship team comes forth. Hello, 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 A, B, C, D, A.
Got it. Hmm? Hello? This is called Growing Pains. <laughs> um, most music uh, ministers or music pastors and stuff would be all over my face right now for having too many people up on the platform, but I don't care. Nope. I've had to deal with this mess. Yeah. I've had, to, I've had to deal with this for since 72, 73 situations. Um, and I guarantee you, if it's happening like the Wednesday night, Friday night, you're going to hear more voices than what you see on the platform. Okay? Thank you, Lord. The Holy Spirit's in this room right now. Yes. And He's already moving. We already present, sense His presence going. Yes, Lord. Uh, it's manifesting Wednesday night and Friday night. There were miracles. Um, she's not going to hurt you. How are you feeling? How are you feeling? Good. Feeling good? Okay. She was here Friday night. Um, the testimonies that she brought forth Friday night. And this was broadcast, and there were three people watching the broadcast and stuff, so I know they're getting touched and blessed also, so. Let's just praise Him.
place. You're right here. Lord, so many times in so many places, we just the Lord, we're waiting for you. And the Lord says, I'm waiting to move from within your being. You have the river of living water. Those that know the Lord have the river of living water. So he's waiting for us to release the kingdom. He's waiting for us.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your great love. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. That it's all based on you and not on us. You are love. Hallelujah, Jesus. And we thank you that we have received that love in the person of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We are one. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It's His love that heals us. It's His love that delivers us. It's His love that saves us. Hallelujah. Provides for us. Meets every need. It's all done through the love of God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. If we ever get to the place where we really can accept that love and believe how much He loves us, nothing will be impossible to us. Praise the Lord, because nothing's impossible to Him. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap this morning. Praise God. Thank the Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you all. You may be seated. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, worship team. All of you. Praise the Lord. As many as the Lord our God shall call, right? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Sunday school young'uns can be dismissed. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. God is good. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Let that straggler go. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. I had my blood drawn the other day, but I didn't think it was a very good likeness. Praise the Lord. So. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. How many of you write notes to yourself? Well, there is the queen of note writing. She's got lists for everything. Lists for lists. In fact, I found uh, on, on the counter with her lists, I found this. said, note to self. Don't forget to write that note to yourself. <laughs> I mean, it's getting crazy when it gets that bad. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank the Lord. He's got a sense of humor, the Lord has. Or, I mean, all you got to do is look around. Praise God. Yeah. Yeah. Just, <laughs> he's he's got to be laughing most of the time, at least when he's looking at me. It, right. Jesus. Let's, uh, let's begin with John chapter 6, verses 32 through 35. John 6, 32 through 35. It's taken me a while, but I think I'm ready to accept that it's not butter. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It comes slow to me, you know. Amen. Praise God. Friday is my uh, second favorite F word. <laughs> no. <laughs> You want to know my first? Yeah. I know you're just waiting for this. Fermented. Mm. <laughs> actually, it's... That's, that's good. That's your second. It's actually... Uh, uh, frugivorous. Frugivorous. Fruit eaters. Fruit eaters. He's just waiting for the opportunity to use that word somewhere. Anywhere. 
Praise yeah. the Lord. Well, it's the definition. Don't leave yeah. us hanging. Fruit eater. Fruit eater. Fruit eater. Fruit eater. Frugivorous. Like you have indigenous. You have, you know, like vegetable eaters. You have meat eaters, carnivorous. You know, frugivorous. It's a real word. Fruit eaters. I'm going to write it down. You're going to get, you may get a chance to use that sometime before your life is over. I, in fact, I'd make it a, on my bucket list. I've got to find some conversation somewhere, sometime, that I can actually use that word in a conversation. So everybody will go, what in the world is he talking about? There you go. Praise the Lord. Okay. Praise God. I got to, yes, exactly. When you find yourself in a hole that you don't want to be in, stop digging. So let's move on to the scripture. Praise the Lord. So John chapter 6, uh, verse 32 to 35. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the bre true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. He that believeth on me shall never thirst. Drop down to verse 55 through 57. <coughs> Praise God. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. And he that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me... And I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. Praise God. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 through 4. 1 Corinthians 10, 1 through 4. Praise the Lord. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. We're all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. So, what we really need is just a steady diet of Christ in His finished work. Praise the Lord. Psalms 23, let's just read Psalms 23. It's six verses. Psalms 23, 1 through 6. We just need to be feeding on Jesus and His finished work. Everything else, that's the simplicity of the gospel. Everything else is just kind of stuff we add to it to, to complicate things and, and make it more about us than it is about Him. Praise the Lord. So, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. Yes. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for Thou art with me. Thy rod and Thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Praise God. Yes. That word pasture is a, a Hebrew word, nawa, and it means paradise. Praise the Lord. There's more to this. You know, we are the sheep that have gone astray, and He's leading us, amen, someplace. And that pasture, it, it translates paradise, is He's leading us to paradise. He's leading us to Eden. An Eden place, praise the Lord. And so, uh, you know, God always puts something on the table that we can feed on Amen. that will deliver us from our oppressors. Yes. The Word of God, the bread of life, hallelujah. And Jesus is that bread, amen. Yes. So, because the Lord is our shepherd, we're not going to lack anything. Right. Amen. He gives us a place of rest, a paradise, a, a home in Him, praise God. Amen. And our rest... He leads us beside these still waters so that we can rest, right? So our rest flows from an understanding that He feeds us in the shadow of a death. 
the shadow of his death at Calvary. Praise the Lord. Amen. This isn't about me dying. This is about him having died. Praise the Lord. He leads me through the valley of the shadow of death, and I don't have any fear of evil, amen, because of the death. Hallelujah. When we feed on that, it brings us through the valley of the shadow of death with an, without any fear, amen, and with an anointing, he said, on our heads until it runs over and fills the cups, amen, and runs over, hallelujah, amen. And that divine supply, praise the Lord, that produces paradise. Yes. Praise the Lord. It produces heaven on earth, amen. When we can believe God that he'll supply all my needs according to his riches in glory, amen. This, this old world, amen, all of a sudden takes on a whole new dynamic, praise God. Amen. We are in this world, but we're not of this world. We are of another world, of a heavenly world, of a kingdom where all of our needs are met. He is our source for every believer. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's divine supply that produces paradise. And that word again, if you want to look it up for yourself in the strongest concordance, it's 3587. And that is a Greek word, paradisios, and it literally translates an Eden place. Praise God. Hallelujah. An Eden place. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 Verses 23 and 24. 1 Corinthians 11, 23 and 24. Yes. We talk about it all the time, but this thing is about Jesus. Yes. Amen. And we find ourselves in this mirror. A reflection of God. A reflection of Jesus. We are His offspring. We were created in His image. Praise the Lord. Every one of us, amen, as believers, have been born again. Born from above. And we are now the offspring of God. Praise the Lord. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. So the night before Jesus died, he, he tells us this. I'm, I'm guessing that's pretty important. Right. I mean, it's one of the last things he says before he dies. Amen. 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 So when we eat the lamb... And we drink the water of life. Yes. It removes every trace of the curse from our lives. Yes. Now I'm telling you, we got you got to believe this. You can't just keep making mental assent to this because this is the key. Yep. This is why we don't experience the supernatural and the miraculous to the degree that God wants us to experience. Because we don't see ourselves completely restored, completely rejuvenated, completely righteous and perfect in the eyes of God just as Jesus is. Amen? So, amen. This removes the curse. When we eat the bread of life, when we believe it, when we digest it, when we when it becomes our life, right. you are what you eat. Right? Yeah. Amen? When that happens, we are literally transformed into this new creation. Yes. Amen? The creation that is made in the image of God. Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. All things have been made new. Yes. We're delivered from the curse. We're not under the law. We're not under the, the, the rules and the regulations. Amen. We are under the sonship and under the kingship of Jesus Christ himself. Amen. Yes. So walking in miracles should not be difficult. Right. We struggle with having miracles on earth because our minds go back to our flesh. Yes. Our minds go back to what we deserve as human beings, amen, back before we were redeemed, back before we were born again, amen, back before we were created in His likeness, amen. 1 John chapter 3, verses 19 through 24, we were talking about this during the preliminaries when people were giving their testimonies and stuff, and so I'm going to refer to it right now, kind of bring some clarity hopefully to it. This is 1 John chapter 3, 19 through 24. Hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before Him. Assure our hearts. For if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence towards God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of Him because we keep His commandments and do those things that are pleasing in His sight. And this is His commandment, that we should believe on the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, as He gave us commandment. And he that keepeth His commandments dwelleth in Him, and He in Him. And hereby we know that He abideth in us by the Spirit which He hath given us. Praise the Lord. How many of you know God knows everything? Yeah. You're not hiding anything from God. 
your, your secret stupid is, is revealed. Because it's not a secret. Amen. Not to God. He knows it all. Praise the Lord. He knows everything. And in spite of that, in fact, because of that, He has declared us righteous in Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. You know, I talk, I talk about myself only because it's, everything's all about me. But no, I'm saying, you know, I've, I've admitted to a lot of kind of nasty things in my life. Most of you know that. Uh, praise the Lord. But there's some stuff I haven't told you. And I'm not going to. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. You, the, the, some of the stuff you heard is pretty ugly, pretty bad. Amen. But there's some other stuff. Praise the Lord. I'm not talking about it. But here's the news. You may have been able to accept me because of some other stuff that was bad but not horribly bad. But God has accepted me knowing everything. Even the unseen things, even the things that I didn't do but wanted to do, right. even the thoughts and intents of my heart, He has said, you're good with me. Jesus. And He said the same thing about every one of you if you're a believer. Yes. He knows everything, praise the Lord, yes. and He still has declared us to be righteous. So we have to assure our hearts, according to the Scripture, because whatever your heart is assured by... Amen. In other words, your heart will be assured by whatever condemns you. You understand what I'm saying? Your, your assurance of what God will do for you is based on whatever you believe condemns you. Does that make any sense to you? That's why he has, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Why? So that our heart will assure us that... No matter, even when I have a doubt, God is greater than my heart. Yes. He won't condemn me even when I condemn myself, even when I can't get past some of my past. Glory. Yes. He knows it all. That's right. And He assures me yep. that there's nothing held against me. Glory. Amen. God is greater than our heart's condemnation. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yep. No matter how big that condemnation might be in your life, God is greater than it. Yep. Amen. You say, well, sure, Nathan, if I keep His commandments. But this is an Old Testament commandments. Remember, He has removed every trace of the curse yep. of the law from our lives. Yes. No judgment. Amen. And this is His command. 1 John chapter 3, 23 and 24. This is His commandment, that we should believe on the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as He gave us commandment. And He that keepeth His commandments dwelleth in Him, He in Him, and hereby we know that He abideth in us by the Spirit which He has given us. Here's the only commandment. Believe on the one, Jesus Christ. Believe on what He has done. Believe that He has taken care of everything. Amen. That through that death of His, Amen, He has delivered us from all judgment, yes. from all the curse of the law, from anything, Amen, outside of the goodness and the grace and the blessing of God. Yes. Amen. Because when we believe He has qualified us, yep. Amen, then we get everything that we're qualified for. All things amen. are ours. Amen. Praise God. Look at Isaiah uh, 53, 4 through 6. Hallelujah. This is prophesying of the coming of the Messiah and what He's going to do for us. Amen. Surely He has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem Him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep. Remember yeah. Psalms 23? All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Praise the Lord. Amen. So guilt. Yep. Even after it's been dealt with, can intimidate us. Yep. Praise the Lord. That's why we have to have our minds totally renewed. Amen. He has, even though we've gone astray, He come, He's He saved us, right? And now He's leading us back to paradise, back to an Eden place. In God. Amen. Where everything, all your needs are met. Where everything is taken yes. care of. Where you don't have to do anything anymore except receive it. Yes. Praise the Lord. Sickness. Weakness. Distresses. 
He took our haunting thoughts, those things that torment us in the night, amen, of not receiving a miracle because of something about us. I need this healing. I need this financial breakthrough. I need this. But my thoughts haunt me that you don't deserve it. You're still screwing up, even today. Amen. He didn't just take our sin. He took our guilt. Amen. Our condemnation. Everything that comes with it. Praise the Lord. He took it. And that's the truth that assures our heart in 1 John. That's the thing that takes care of the condemnation. Miracles are not earned. They are received as gifts. Just as salvation is. Praise the Lord. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. He has given us, according as His divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain to life and to godliness through the knowledge of Him that has called us to glory and virtue. So everything we have need in the natural life and in, in the real world, amen, and everything that pertains to our spirituality, to who we are in Christ. He's already given it all to us. We already have it. It has been given. Yes. Amen. Through the knowledge of Him that has called us to glory and virtue. That's why He says, whoever eats my flesh, whoever drinks my, yes. my blood, amen, he will never thirst. He will never hunger. Why? Because all of your needs will be met yes. when you believe on Him. Right. It's already given to us. Romans chapter 8 and verse 11. Romans 8 and 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. The Holy Spirit, let me just say this, is constantly, all the time, quickening you. Yes. Praise the Lord. God's presence in you is to keep you in health. Amen. To keep you prospering. Yes. Amen. To keep you delivered. Yes. Hallelujah. Quickening you. Yes. Praise God. The same spirit that raised up a dead body is in your living body. Yes. Now, if he can raise up a dead body, what do you suppose he can do in a living body? Jesus. Nothing shall be impossible if you know that that's what's going on in you. That's what this is all about. Yes. He is quickening you constantly, yes. continuously. But you have to be assured of that. Yes. You have to be confident of that. And it's not based on you. No way. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 10, verses 6 through 8. Romans 10, 6 through 8. Praise the Lord. This is what, you know, we get caught up sometimes in church and in our personal lives even doing this. But the righteousness which is of faith, that's, that's us. Speaks like this. This is how we're supposed to speak. Mm -hmm. Don't say in your heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down. This is what Suzanne was talking about relative to, to uh, Jody's message Wednesday night. What I'm saying to me is going to, is going to be very strongly influencing what I speak yes. to the situations in my life. Right. And that's what he's talking about. The righteousness which is of faith speaks on this wise. If I recognize that I am the righteousness of God in Christ, then I'll say something. I'll speak something. Amen. Yes. amen. I'm not going to say to myself, who's going to ascend? Who's going to go get him? Yeah. Amen. Uh, that is to bring Christ down from above. Right. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth yes. and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Praise the Lord. He doesn't have to come down to me. He doesn't have to come up to me. He doesn't have to come from somewhere to me. He's in me. Yes. He and I are one. I don't have to pray for God to come. He's quickening me yes. all the time. He's in me, giving me life. His life is constantly flowing in my body, in my yes. humanity, as well as in my spirit. Praise, Praise the Lord. Look, just look for, here's a good example. Psalms 91. Uh, verses 14 through 16. Psalms 91, verse 14 through 16. Because he set his love on me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high. This is God talking about us. 
I will set him on high because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. And I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. Will I satisfy him and show him my salvation? The older you get, the more that's going to be relevant. Praise the Lord. But that's a word from God to us. But that's what we should be speaking instead of saying to ourselves, Well, you know, I got this thing. And, and uh, you know, after all, Grandma died of this and somebody else had it. And, and, you know, you see it all the time. Everybody's getting these things and it's on the news. And, you know, there's no cure and all the rest of this bogus junk. Mm -hmm. Amen. But he said, with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. And that word salvation is, encompasses everything. It's not just not going to hell. It's your, your finances. It's your healing. It's your health. It's your deliverance. It's your protection. It's your provision. Praise the Lord. Amen. So he, 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 look at, let's go to Romans uh, chapter 10 and read verses 9 through 11. Romans 10 9 through 11. Praise God. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Yes. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Right. You won't be disappointed. Right. Praise the Lord. Confess. Declare it. Speak it. That's what we're supposed to do. That is our end of this deal. That's our part. Right. Praise the Lord. That's the only thing we do. And I think it's amazing that Adam... Adam had a garden, and because he didn't keep the garden and guard the garden, it became a wilderness, it became uninhabited. The garden could also be called a finished work. Because in Genesis 2, he says, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. So God planted a garden in the midst of a finished work. But because Adam didn't guard it and keep it, keep the finished work, it became a wasteland. Yeah. It became a wilderness, something that couldn't provide or wouldn't provide. Yeah. But the second Adam shows up. Yes. Where does he show up? Right after his baptism, he's in a wilderness. Yeah. And he undergoes the same temptation that the first Adam went through. The serpent said, if you're the son of God, command these stones to be turned into bread. What did he challenge Adam, the first Adam? If you do this and do that, if you'll eat from this tree, you'll be like God. He was already created in the image of God. So he challenged his identity, right? So that's what the serpent's doing here. He said, command these stones to be turned into bread. It's, it's just wild. I mean, the temptation of the second Adam has to do with eating and identity. That's why everything we started out with here is about eating Jesus. It's about eating His flesh, drinking His blood. He is the bread of life. He is the, the, the living waters. Amen. Praise the Lord. So Adam ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which symbolized the law. And made Adam question his identity. He no longer believed that he was in the image and the likeness of God. The second Adam is being tempted with the exact same temptation, just using different symbols. So Jesus knew the stone of the law couldn't give life. Only the true source of life was the living word or living by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Give us this day our daily bread. So Lord, I mean, teach us to live out of our relationship with you, with you, Lord. Feed on the true bread. Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. What was the preceding word? Just before Jesus went into the wilderness, this is my beloved son. In whom I'm well pleased. 
He's living by the proceeding word. Every word that precedes or proceeds out of the mouth of God. He's out there and the temptation is to, is to question your identity. To question who you are. To question whether God will back you up. To question whether you'll have what it is you've got to have. Yes. The proceeding word or the word that came out of God's mouth was, Thou art my beloved son. This is my yes. beloved son in whom I am well pleased. That's us. Yes. Sons and daughters. Yes. Adam believed a lie, but we know the truth. Yes. And the truth is what makes us free. Yes. Praise the Lord. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15. 2 Timothy 2 15. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Study to show yourself approved unto God. Study not to get God's approval, but to prove that you are approved. To show yourself that you are approved by God. That God has approved of you. Right. He has accepted you in the beloved. Amen. So study to show. What are we studying this Bible for? To find out what the next rule is that we got to keep? Or that we have failed to keep? No. We study this word to, to see that we have been approved. Right. That we've been accepted in the beloved. That we are approved. That we are the righteousness of God. That we are His beloved sons and daughters. Amen. In whom He is well pleased. That's what we're studying this for. Not to find our faults and to find our failures. But to find that we have been accepted. That we have been approved. Right. Praise the Lord. Unto God, a workman that doesn't need to be ashamed. Didn't he tell us before we would not be ashamed if we would believe in the name of Jesus Christ and the finished work of Christ? We would not be ashamed. Right. Praise the Lord. We don't need to be ashamed if we would read this thing the way it's supposed to be read. Yes. We wouldn't be ashamed. Right. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Yes. Praise God. Look at James 1.13. It said, God doesn't tempt anybody. Neither is God tempted. How do we, we read this from, you know, the religious perspective and think, you know, somebody's tempting me to go out here and rob a bank. Yeah. Or he's tempting me to go, you know, shoot up some dope. Yeah. Right? Or take somebody else's wife or whatever. It, you know what I'm saying. Just this, what we think of as sin. Tempted. We're being tempted. That's not what he's talking about. Let no man say when he's tempted, I'm tempted of God. Because God doesn't tempt anybody with evil. Neither tempteth he any man. Right. Tempt is, it, it, it means to move off of track, out of God's best, right. out of the best of God's word. Yes. We are tempted, amen, by the enemy to look at this as a condemnation, as a, as a shame or, you know, as a, as a thing of, of finding fault with ourselves. God doesn't do that. No. That's what he's telling us. He doesn't do anything to try to move us off of his accepting us. Right. To move us and to tempt us into believing that we are anything less than totally accepted by God. That we are the righteousness of God. Yes. Amen. Drop down to verse 17. Because we always read these out of context. We never read them in, in conjunction with one another or rarely do we. Every good, and, and every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Comes down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness nor shadow of turning. Yes. God is with you. God is in you. Quickening. Amen. Right. And he's in there quickening you. Amen. Against anything that is not good and perfect. Right. Amen. We are tempted to believe that anything not good and perfect may be coming from God too. Or God's allowing it because we deserve something that's not good and not perfect. Because we're not good and not perfect. But we aren't. That's not our identity. We are good and perfect. We're in his image. Praise the Lord. We are after His likeness. Jesus qualifies us for every good and every perfect gift. Yes. We're not begging God to do these things. He has already qualified us for every good and perfect gift. Jesus. You've got to see yourselves. What we think of that as being, that's egotistical or that's somehow, you know, uh, self-centered or something. No, it's not if it's the fact. Right. It's just like the opposite of uh, a paranoia. You know, you're not paranoid if you know they're out to get you. That's right. Yeah. Right? Well, you're not, you're, not, you're not an egotist if you know that God just loves you crazily and wants to give you every good and perfect gift. That's not being e egotistical or self-centered. That's just agreeing with God. That is. And until we do that, we don't get the good and perfect gifts. We get lesser gifts. Amen. We get stuff that we get, we dumb it down to where we can accept it. When he wants to give us the best yes. of everything. Yes. Praise the Lord. 
Jesus qualifies us for every good and perfect gift. We have been qualified. Praise the Lord. Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. And I, I mentioned this earlier, I quoted from here. Genesis 2, 1 through 3. Every, uh, excuse me, thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. How many of you know that Jesus is our Sabbath? Yes. Praise the Lord. That Sabbath is in us. Yes. That's why we are to rest. Yes. We live in a perpetual Sabbath. Yes. Constantly being quickened. Not by our effort, not by what we do. Because we are in a finished work. And so we just rest. Yes. The work is finished. Hallelujah. Yes. There's nothing more for us to do but to rest in it. In Genesis, it all started in a garden. A finished work, a paradise, where every need was divinely supplied. God's original intent was for us to live in paradise. That's not heaven. It's an Eden place. It's a place on earth yes. where heaven has come. Yes. Praise the Lord. There is a heaven, but that's not what we're talking about because we don't need heaven yet. No. We need heaven on earth. Yes. We need all of our needs to be met. We need our, you know, our supplier, our source, amen, to be able to unload and, uh, and download every good and perfect gift, amen, so that we can live as though we were in heaven yes. on the earth in an Eden place wherever we are. The cross restored that to us. That's why he said, hey, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I don't fear any evil because there's an anointing just flowing over me and my cup runs over and there's always something on the table to feed me in the presence of my enemy. When my enemy comes, I can always feed on something, amen, that will defeat that enemy, that will cause that enemy, amen, to flee. Yes. I embrace that death because it's the finished work that flows from that death. The shadow of his death yes. falls on all of us. And we reap the benefits of the price that he paid. When Jesus looked over at the thief on the cross, what did he say? Today you will be with me in an Eden place. Yes. You'll be with me in paradise. Praise God. And again, that word paradise is translated an Eden place, a park, a place of happiness, a place of joy. The cross has reopened the door to paradise. Yes. And we don't have to die no. to benefit from it. No. He has reopened the gate. You know, they put angels in front of the, the gates to the garden. Why? So they wouldn't get in there and eat from the tree of the knowledge of good, or not from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, so they wouldn't get in there and eat from the tree of life and live forever. We've already been given eternal life. Yes. The gates have been thrown wide open for us. Yes. We're eating. From that tr the tree of life every single day. That's the quickening spirit that is in us. That keeps giving us life. That keeps, uh, you know, quickening us. Right. To our reality. To our true identity. Praise the Lord. It doesn't mean that we don't have difficulties. But it just means that we have a dis divine supply for every difficulty. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. So yes, in the world there are tribulations, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. If we understand what that's talking about, it's yes, there will be challenges to our faith. There will come financial challenges. There'll come physical challenges. There'll come all of those things. But I'm not allowing those to define me or to identify me. I'm looking to Jesus and His finished work yes. to identify who I am and to know that no matter what my need is, He is sufficient to meet every need to do exceeding abundantly above all I can ask or think. Amen. According to that what? The quickening power that is in me. Yes. I don't need somebody else come... Give it to me. I don't need to pull him up from somewhere. You know what I'm saying? I'm not against us having prayer for one another. But what I'm saying, ultimately and perfectly in this, we don't need prayer. We are releasing prayer for those who don't know the Lord, who don't have this revelation, who aren't there already, who haven't understood that I have received all things of the Lord. Yes. Blessed so that we can be a blessing. Yes. Praise the Lord. 
God said, don't eat from this tree of knowledge of good and evil or you're going to die. And religion has been poisoning us with the same wrong tree performance-based religion producing spiritual death. Praise the Lord. The moment Adam ate, he said, I'm naked. I'm ashamed. I'm exposed. I'm humiliated. I've been caught. I've been bad. I need to hide. But this gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the grace of God, doesn't make you run from God. Mm-hmm. It makes you run to God. Yes. yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. Even when you're at your worst, yes, Lord. God's supply is still there for you. Yes. Praise the Lord. Jesus. Even when you feel like the biggest failure in the world, even when you've blown it big time, yes. His provision is still there for you if you're not basing it on your performance, but on His finished work. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. So, you know, people say, well, sin separated, uh, you know, separates you from God. That is a lie if you're born again. Yes. Sin didn't separate Adam from God. In fact, God went looking for him. Yes. Not to punish him, wow. to protect him. Yes. Because had he eaten, eaten from the tree of the knowledge or eaten from the tree of life, he would have been forever in sin. Eternity. All of us would forever be in sin. There would be no deliverance from it. That was the reason for expelling him from the garden. Not because God didn't want to have interaction with him, because he did. Praise the Lord. God pursued him. Said, who told you you were naked? Who, who, who made you feel guilty? Who challenged what I have said about you? The accuser of the brethren. And what did he use? What was the weapon that he used? Condemnation. To keep Adam from running to God. And that's what he does to us. Guilt. Condemnation. So you won't turn to God and receive what God wants you to have. But so you'll cower somewhere feeling guilty and ashamed. And wondering why can't I get the victory. Because if I could just get the victory. God would deliver me. God would bless me. No you've already got the victory. We are living in victory. Praise the Lord. Their nakedness didn't bother God. They were naked all the time. They had always been naked. They just didn't know they were naked. Our sin doesn't bother God. If it did, He'd never have anything ever to do with us because we sin every day. Jesus tried to make that clear to us. It isn't just what you do. It's what you think about doing. I'd like to slap her. You know, I'd like to punch him. I'd like to, you know, you know what I'm saying. We don't do it because we know better. Because we're trying to be socially... You know, functional. Yeah. Right? But we still would really like to do it. Yeah. That's, That's He said that. You might as well do it because right. unless you're under the blood, you're just as guilty for having thought it or wanted to do it as if you had actually done it. That's right. Praise the Lord. They've been naked all the time. Yeah, Run to God. Yes. In your nakedness. In your reality. Run to him because that's what he's looking for. He's, he's wanting you. I, I, I talked about this a couple of weeks ago when I said, you know, we, you know, we're always looking at the earth face. God is looking to see his face in us. The only way that's reflected is in when we believe that we are his offspring. As long as we keep reflecting the earth face, he can't do anything for us. Praise the Lord. God keeps restoring us back to his original intent. That original intent was for us to enjoy the days of heaven on earth. Amen. The kingdom, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 21. Deuteronomy 11 and verse 21. That your days may be multiplied, that the days of your children... In the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them as the days of heaven upon the earth. That's what God promised. And Jesus has fulfilled the demand. Amen. To keep the law. And that is our promise. It's still ours. Amen. That our days may be multiplied. That we would live longer. Amen. Than the... You know, national average or whatever you want to call it. And that our children would as well. Yes. 
Amen. And their children and their children's children. And they would, be, they would be in paradise. They would be in an Eden place. They would live in a place where God would supply all of their needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. In a place where they didn't have to struggle and, and battle for all the things that everybody in the world does. But where God would just supernaturally meet needs. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Give them the days of heaven on the earth. Praise the Lord. Yes. Praise God. The righteousness that would access God's blessings and promises has never been attained by human effort. Never. But the righteousness by faith gives us access to every blessing and promise in Jesus Christ. Yes. There should be a confident expectation of good things. Yes. When bad stuff is happening around us, there should be a confidence and assurance something good is going to come out of this. Yes. God's going to meet my need. God's going to, it doesn't matter how fouled up and, and messed up it may look. Somehow, if I believe, God will meet the need. Yes. No matter how big a challenge it might be. If you'll seek first the kingdom of God, the kingdom of rest, and His righteousness. If you'll seek the finished work of Jesus and His righteousness, not yours. Look for that. Expect it. Trust in it. Have confidence in it. And all these things will be added to you. Yes. All the healings. All the finances. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. All the adjectives you can come up with. Whatever you need. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. The reason that all of these things haven't been added to us isn't for a lack of believing for the things. It's the lack of believing into righteousness. Yes. We've been believing for the things yes. with the wrong access code. We've been believing that we'll get the things when we get good enough or if the stars align perfectly and you know everything just works out exactly like it should if I get the right person to pray for me, if I'm in the right situation, the right circumstance and, and everything will work out just fine, everything will line up and then bang, I'll get it. No. We believe into righteousness and all these things are added. Praise the Lord. Believing in our righteousness in Christ. Our righteous condition yes. in Jesus Christ. Yes. Eating His flesh. Yes. Drinking the eternal water that flows. Drinking His blood. Living in His finished work. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. Two scriptures and we're done. Revelation chapter 2 verse 7. See, this stuff isn't in there just so that we can go, gee, I never saw that before. This stuff is in here because we're supposed to be changed. We're supposed to be different. And most of us have been in some kind of religious situation yeah. at different points in our life, and nothing has really changed that much. Yeah. Now, we may be a little bit better people. We may not be quite as you know, messed up and fouled up as we were, but we still got issues. We still got problems. We still got struggles. We still got fears. We still got anxiety. Why? Because we haven't come into the finished work of Christ. We haven't operated from our condition as being the righteousness of God in Christ. Therefore, we're constantly struggling and projecting everything into the future that someday, you know, if everything gets just right and I get it in my act all together here, I'll get that blessing or I'll get that healing or I'll get that deliverance or I'll get this thing or that. Well, my family will finally start functioning as a, as a, as real people instead of dysfunctional morons. Yeah. I'm not talking about your family now. I'm talking about mine. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give, look at this, to eat of the tree of the life which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Yes. Hallelujah. When we overcome, how do we overcome? By resting. Yes. By, by being seated in the finished work. Yes. Praise the Lord. Then He feeds us. Yes. Praise the Lord. From the tree of life. Which is Jesus. Yes. Drop down to verse 17. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone. Well, remember this, because we're going to read another scripture here that will make this make more sense. And the new stone, and, and the stone, a new name written, which no man knows, saving he that receiveth it. So he's going to give us supernatural bread, which is exactly what we've been reading about here, right? And by giving us that bread to eat the hidden manna. With that, he'll give us a white stone. We talked about this a month or two back, I don't know, 
you know, the Urim, Urim and, the, and the Thummim and how the, the white stone meant guiltless, no guilt, no shame. That's what that's representing here. It's just, it's just a symbol, praise the Lord, of what we are in Christ, of what we have. We have the white stone. We have innocence. Yes. That's what Adam had. It wasn't that he didn't do stupid stuff. It was that he was innocent, so he couldn't be found guilty because there was no law against it. Right. Children are, are, can be nasty little creatures, yeah. but they're innocent. Yes. Right? Well, that's what he's telling us. You have been restored or redeemed back to that original condition in an, in an Eden place where there is no law. Yes. Therefore, you can't break the law. Yes. Therefore, you are innocent. Yes. Praise the Lord. We're, and so what do we do? We make it all about laws, yes. all about rules, and we don't have any. Yes. And it's out of that freedom and that flow of God's love that we actually live better, more righteous, more decent, more holy, more... God-like lives. Yes, it is. But we're not doing... That's not the focus. That's the, that's the fruit. You can't make fruit come on the tree. Right. If it's not the right tree, it's not going to come on. If it's the right tree, it'll happen. Yes. The rain comes down from heaven, you know, so on and so forth. So God will take care of the fruit. We just need to rest in our identity. Yes. He's the root. We're the branches. We're connected. We're one. Amen. So I'll give him to eat of the hidden man and give him a white stone and the, and the stone a new name written, which no man knows, saving he that receiveth it. All right. Revelation chapter 22, verses 1 through 4. Last scripture. Revelation 22, 1 through 4. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and the Lamb. Praise the Lord. Drink my blood. Drink the, 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 the eternal waters. Amen. And you will become a river of living water. And out of your belly will flow yes. those same, that same reality. Amen. <laughs> so, and there shall be no more curse. The throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it. And His servants shall serve Him. And they shall see His face and His name shall be in their foreheads. That's us. Praise the Lord. Yes. We've been given a name. It's a God name. It's a Jesus name. Praise the Lord. That's our true identity. That's God's telling us, this is who you are. This is how I have defined you. Amen. A steady diet of Jesus. We'll take care of all of our issues. We make that the focus instead of us. You say praise the Lord? Yes. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap this morning. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Nothing should be impossible if you can believe. The only commandment is believe on Jesus Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. Believe on Him and confess Him. Not you. Him. Right. And your days here can be as heaven on earth. Because yes. He's given us back an Eden place, a paradise to live in, in this world where all of our needs are met yep. by a divine supply. Yep. Yep. Not dependent on us. Yes. Dependent only on the goodness and the grace of God. Yes. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Keep, but you got to keep telling yourself this. you got to keep, yes. keep reminding yourself. This is the idea behind the, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. And I know that seems, you know, well, kind of redundant. And we just kind of, that's just wearing ourselves out with this. But come on. If you hear a lie often enough, it becomes almost like the truth. Now, this is not a lie. This is the truth. But we need to be hearing the truth of God over and over and over. And the most powerful voice is your own. If you'll say it to yourself, then you'll be able to speak it, amen, to others. Praise the Lord. Amen. Give the Lord another hand. Praise God. Amen. God bless all of you. Appreciate you all being here this morning. God bless you. And go in the power of His might. Amen. In Jesus' name, you're dismissed.